Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba' ahabatifillah from the lessons of the prophetic sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam which are codified in the books of Ahl hadith Ahl sunnati wal jama'ah the creed in ittiqad wa fiqh and all and adab and all the aspects of of the religion have been codified by Ahla Hadith wa Iman and the Salaf al Salih. And from those immensely important texts, which are contain the revelation of the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is. Imam Bukhari's Sahih, Sahih Jami'. And in it, he mentions in the Book of Faith. And so we want to look at Iman. What comprises Iman? What is the difference between Ahle Iman or Ahle Kufr here? What is the difference between Ahle Iman, the people of Iman, and the people of Zanadik, Zanadika? You know, the people of Ilhad, the people who uh, who have left the fold of Islam and the people who are heretical in regards to the Islamic faith and the creed of Islam. And so Imam Bukhari, he mentioned in a chapter, Bab al-Muslim man salama muslimun min lisanihi the chapter that the Muslim, a Muslim is the one who avoids harming Muslims with his tongue and hands. And he put this in the chapter of Iman, Kitab al-Iman, the Kitab of Faith, letting us know that this is an aspect of faith. Now, was this only on Imam Bukhari's part? No, this is from the fiqh of Bukhari and looking at the hadith, the text of the hadith, letting us know it's mansus, it's on the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it's from his statement that this is a part of iman, this is a part of faith. And if this is the right of the believer that we should be cautious on how we use our tongue with regards to one another, speaking ill of one another, slandering, cursing, attacking the honor of one another, what about the Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiyallahu ta'anu majma'in walau kariyal kafirun walau kariyal mushrikun walau kariyal ahla bid'ah even if ahla bid'ah detested even if ahla kufr and disbelief hates it we say radiyallahu ta'anu ajma'in may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with all of the Sahaba radiyallahu ta'anu ajma'in in this hadith, narrated Abdullah bin Amr radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma, and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal, al-Muslimu man salama al-Muslimun min lisanihi wa yadihi wal-muhajiru man hajira ma naha allahu an. So this is in Sahih, <coughs> Sahih al-Bukhari, and it's the hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr radiallahu ta'ala anhum of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said a Muslim is the one who avoids harming Muslims with his tongue and hands. And the muhajir, meaning the one who uh, immigrates, is the one who gives up all that Allah has forbidden. Ahabatifillah, in this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, just some of the fawai, some of the benefits that we gain is first, to learn that from Iman is to restrain our tongues in general, but to restrain our tongues, especially when it comes to Ahli Iman. To not be of those people who spend their time attacking the honor of others, cursing one another, uh, slandering, backbiting, lying about others, uh, and this in, in general about anyone. But especially from Iman, is not to do that with the believers. And me, even more so 
is the Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiyallahu ta'anim ajma'in because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed them with suhbah. It's from the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed them with the companionship of the most beloved of his creation, his final and last prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad ibn Abdullah, that they were his companions radiyallahu ta'anim ajma'in. He chose them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was pleased with them. Radiyallahu ta'anhum ajma'in. They were the ones who carried the religion of Islam. They were the ones who helped to preserve the Quran and preserve the Sunnah. They were the defenders of the faith. They are the asl, the origin of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. They are the origin of the Salaf al Salih. They are the Ru'us al Salaf. They are the heads of the Salaf al-Salih radiyallahu ta'anim ajma'in and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said khayran nas qarni thumma ladhini yalunuhum thumma ladhini yalunuhum the best people is those of my generation who are the generation of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sahabat al-rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiyallahu ta'anim ajma'in they were the best uh, generation then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam thumma ladhini yalunuhum then those who followed them thumma ladhini yalunuhum and those who followed them so it lets us know the Salaf is our Qudwa, that they are the example that we should follow if we want to know and understand the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam properly. If we want to contextualize the Sunnah and understand the Sunnah to be able to practice the Sunnah, then we should love the Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiyallahu ta'anu majma'in, the defenders and the compilers and the uh, preservers of the sunnah, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the ah, ahlu sunnati wal jama'ah, the asl of the jama'ah. And we also learn from this hadith, not only is it from iman to restrain your tongue with regards to the believers in general, but also your hand, meaning that do not strike one another. Do not physically attack one another. Do not kill one another. That, that should not be a something of mystery. But unfortunately, throughout history, the Ummah has had blood and internal bloodshed from the beginning of time. And we also see from the benefits of this hadith is that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also said, which is from Iman, the aspect of Hijrah and the greatness of Hijrah, meaning the greatness of, of immigrating and migrating. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam let us know that migration is not just as we uh, generally assume or hold to be true, that that's one form of Hijrah, and that is one of the greatest forms of Hijrah. But this is also a part of Iman, as the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, that this is <clears throat> one of the greatest, uh, you know, forms of Iman. Uh, this is a part of Iman, and that is to, or uh, the Prophet ﷺ described the Muhajir as being the one who leaves that which Allah Subhanahu wa Taala prohibits, leaves what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has prohibited. That is from the asal of Iman. And that is a part of, of course, Amr bin Ma'ruf and Nahil al-Munkar, commanding the good and forbidding the evil, is that you forbid it upon yourself and you abandon sin. And also, we have to uh, look at this concept of making hijra from our sins. And even when we study the hijra of immigrating from the land of disbelief to the land of belief in Iman, from the land of bid'ah to the land of sunnah, that the maqsad, one of the intents is to be with the people of faith in Iman and to provide a better spiritual environment for yourself and your families. That way you could better worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, or included in that, is the hijrah 
from your sins, hopefully, that that is a part of it, that you're making a physical effort to leave, for example, a sinful place to a less sinful place or a place of disbelief to a place of iman and faith. And the part of that intent is that you will be abandoning sin or lessening the chances that you will fall into sin and be in a sinful environment. So that other hijra can be included in there or is in part is a part of that. However, as the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that the muhajir min hajira min 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 ma naha wahu an that the muhajir the immigrant is the one who leaves and abandons that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited. So avoiding sins. And a point I want to make is that just making the physical hijra is not simply enough when it comes to abandoning sins. That a person has to always consciously make effort to abandon those sins. Because how many people make hijra from the land of disbelief to the land of belief and commit immense sins and from the major sins. And how many people grow up in the land of Islam and the land of Tawheed and the places of Khair, but they didn't have Tawfiq in abandoning their sins. And some of them become the greatest sinners and some of them even leave their faith. And so all of this, we see the relationship with Iman and we ask Allah Azzawajal to forgive us of our many sins and bless us to be from Ahl Iman. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with all the Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiallahu ta'ala in majma'in. And may Allah wa ta'ala be pleased and forgive and guide the believers everywhere, those who came before us and proceeded and passed on, and those who uh, from our time and those who will come later. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala Muhammad.